What is more embarrassing than saying goodbye to someone and then still have to walk together? Or realizing that your headphones were not completely plugged in and everyone was listening to your music? Exactly, showing up to rehearsal without having practiced. <laughs> and today, my friends, it's time to face my deepest nightmare. Now, I hope that this will never happen to me, but today we'll try to get as close as possible to this experience. All I need is my piano, the scores, and of course, the orchestra. Okay, today my orchestra is my CD player, but it will do the job. <laughs> Oh, and of course, I need myself. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Anik, I'm a classical pianist, and today we are going to play Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto. Now, people who know this channel know that I like to do the one minute, 10 minute, one hour challenge. And in this challenge, I'm basically trying to learn a piece in one minute, 10 minutes, and one hour. And after every practicing session, I have to try to perform the piece just the way it is in that moment. Okay, so the scores of today's challenge are sponsored by Stretta Music. Thanks a lot for sponsoring. And of course, you can win the scores today by writing hashtag Rach2 in the comments comments down below and also which movement you love the most out of this concerto and why. Now the good thing about this version by Hall Leonard is that there is a soundtrack without the piano parts. Of course it's not going to be the exact same feeling as playing with a real orchestra but at least we get the sound and like somehow the feeling a little bit. <laughs> now this is the first time that I'm trying this challenge with a piano concerto. If you want to see more like this let me know also in the comments which other piano concertos I should try. Now if you want to hear how I'm normally playing here's a little concert announcement. I'm going to play my New Year's concert in Leipzig at Gewandhaus with all Chopin teeth. I'm so excited for this concert because it's also in a very very beautiful concert hall and Leipzig is the city of Bach. Tickets and information in the link in the description box and now let's get started with Rachmaninoff. Okay, okay, I think I have to correct myself from the beginning. What is more embarrassing? I guess I found something that's even more embarrassing. I can't find the recordings of the challenge. I, I played the full challenge. I put it on my computer. I can't find it anymore. <sighs> okay, so basically I had to record the full challenge again. But since I already practiced the first part of the piano concerto, I had to choose a new part. And this time I chose something more towards the end, basically the climax of the first movement. So now, finally, without further ado, let's start the challenge. <laughs> Okay, so for the 10 minutes this time, I was intelligent enough <laughs> to not just continue sight reading everything that I want to see and, and play in this piano concerto, but just focus on the part that I just sight read and really try to get as far as possible in the 10 minutes. <laughs> And by the way, our sponsor of today, Strata Music, also created a little Christmas countdown on their website. So you can open a door every day and behind every door, there's going to be a sheet of music free for you to download. So definitely go and check it out. I'll put the link in the description box.
I absolutely love playing piano concertos because it's just such a cool experience to play simultaneously together but also against the orchestra as the solo is. Also because the piano is such a massive instrument you can create a big sound that holds against the orchestra. Of course I have to say the Rachmaninoff piano concertos there are some parts where the orchestra is so overwhelming in its sound that even the piano can't really hold up against it but I still absolutely love this piano concerto. <laughs> Now, instead of using the CD player to play the orchestra, I was just using my phone. But no, of course, the sound of my phone is, um, let's say, not enough. <laughs> and basically, I couldn't really hear the orchestra playing and I was just guessing when exactly I have to come when. And I discovered to just use my headphones very, very late in the challenge, actually. Now, I think there might be some people out there wondering how big my hands are because many people think that you need very big hands to play Rachmaninoff. Now, I have to say my hands are not extremely big. They are also not extremely small. I, I would say they are very normal. I can play a ninth without a problem and a tenth, like, it's, it's very stretched, but it's still possible for me to play a tenth. Now, for this piece, you would definitely need hands that can play octaves without a problem. But everything that goes above an octave, you can also just play it as an arpeggio or try to leave away notes that are not so important. I don't want to say that any of these notes are not important, it's just that sometimes you can just figure out the priorities. So there is like the main melody, there are notes that are supporting the harmony and that are defining the harmony. So try to find a note that is maybe doubled, either doubled in your voices or in the orchestra voices, so it's not going to miss out something important. already announced in the beginning of this video, I'm going to play in Leipzig at Gewandhaus, my New Year's concert on January 13th. And for everyone who's not so familiar with the importance of Leipzig in music history, well, this place is where Johann Sebastian Bach lived, worked and also died. So the city is actually full with Bach memorials and merchandise and so on. It's, it's crazy and as a musician I absolutely love it. But it's not only Bach that lived there, it's also another very big composer, which was Felix Mendelssohn, who also also worked at the Gewandhaus. So for everyone that is interested in getting a little bit of musical impulse or just learning something about music history, Leipzig should be definitely on your list. And I'm very excited to play not only in this beautiful city, but also in this beautiful concert hall. Tickets and information in the description box. <laughs> Now, towards the end, I was practicing more and more together with the recording, since I could keep up with the tempo as well. Actually, I felt like the recording was using a tempo that was slightly too slow for me personally. Like, I would have liked to play it a little bit faster, just like a little, a, a tiny bit, just really a tiny bit fast. And also, I could really feel that the conductor is lacking, because normally I would communicate with the conductor while I'm playing, so we can really match up together. But I also have to say that the training with the recording is definitely helpful helping to just understand when exactly is the orchestra playing what. Of course, as I said before, it's not going to be the real experience, but it's coming quite close to it, let's say. Three, two, one. Oh, done.
this time everything is recorded. <laughs> Now, on a scale from 0 to 10, I would say that this piece is definitely a 11 in terms of technical difficulty. It was very, very difficult. Probably one of the most difficult challenges that I ever did here. But it was totally worth trying it. Now, which piano concertos are your favorites? And also, don't forget that you can win the scores of today's challenge by putting hashtag Rachtu and also which movement you love the most and why. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. We will see us in the next videos and in Leipzig. <laughs>